So today, we're gonna go on ahead and react to the story of Wukong. To be more specifically, we're gonna react to the complete story of Wukong and the origin of Goku by facts and history and more. Now, with that in mind, let's go on ahead and get to the video. The complete story of Sun Wukong and the origin of Goku. Sun Wukong is the Chinese trickster god known as the Monkey King. Sun Wukong is known as Sun Goku in Japanese, which was a great inspiration for the creators of Dragon Ball. He single-handedly defeated the 100,000 heavenly warriors of the Army of Heaven, the 28 constellations, Neja, and the four heavenly kings. Sun Wukong possesses many abilities. He has amazing strength and is able to support the weight of two celestial mountains on his shoulders while oh, running damn. with the speed of a meteor. Jesus, what in the hell? Okay, yeah, this is, we are not this fast. <laughs> we are not that fast in the game. We had to get nerfed. That is insane though, holy hell. It is extremely fast, oh. capable of traveling 54,000 kilometers in a mortal jump. Oh. Sun Wukong also possesses 72 Earth transformations, which allow him access to 72 unique powers, including the ability to transform into various animals and objects. My man's an insect. Hey, no His way. hair has magical properties, capable of making copies of himself or transforming into various weapons. It was crazy. The 72 transformations, when I think of this, like when I see this shit, it reminds me of like this, the 72, uh, 72 like demons or heavenly kings. They correlate with some other, uh, cultures, like some other, um, I guess religions, type shit, I think. I don't know. That's very familiar though. Weapons, animals, and other things. He also displays partial weather manipulation abilities Damn. and can stop people. What is his, uh, storm from <laughs> Wolverine? What the hell? People in place with repair magic. In this video, you will learn the story of the Monkey King Sun Wukong. Subscribe to stay up to date. And remember that we upload two videos every week. Go! Oh. The Monkey King is born from a strong, magical stone found on top of the mountain of flowers and fruits. However, this stone is not a common stone, since it receives nourishment. She looked like a uh, Infinity Stone from uh, Avengers Endgame. Meant from Heaven, Yang, which has a positive nature, and from Earth. Wait a minute. So Heaven is seen as mostly white, which is pure, with a little bit of evil, and then Nature or like Earth is like we're evil as fuck, but we have a little bit of like hope or like or like uh, goodness in us. Hmm. Very uh, very good representation of a race. I'm not gonna lie. Yin which has a negative nature and is therefore capable of producing living things. According to Taoist tradition, the stone develops mm. a magical womb, which bursts open oh. one day to produce a ball sized stone egg. When the wind blows on the egg, it turns into a stone monkey that can already <laughs> crawl and walk. This origin is probably an allusion to the Hindu monkey God Hanuman, whose father was the God of the wind. As his eyes dart, Two beams of golden light shoot towards the Jade Palace and okay. startle the Jade Emperor. When he sees the light, he orders two of his officers to investigate. They report what about the, the stone monkey and that the light is going out while the monkey eats and drinks. The Jade Emperor thinks it's nothing special. On the mountain, the monkey befriends various animals and joins a group of other wild monkeys. After playing, the monkeys bathe regularly in a stream. One day, they decide to find the source of the stream and climb the mountain to a waterfall. Dude, this shit looks so visually satisfying. Like, I honestly, I would be the type of dude who would make like a cabin near this shit and just chill. You know what I mean? Like a get away from everything. Oh my goodness, that'd be great. They declare that whoever goes through the waterfall, finds the source of the stream, and comes out again, will become their king. The stone monkey volunteers and jumps into the waterfall. He finds a large iron bridge over a torrent of water, on the other side of which is a cave. He persuades the other monkeys to jump as well, and they make it to his home. Sun Wukong then reminds them of his earlier statement, so they declare him the king of him. He takes the throne and calls himself Handsome Monkey King. This Handsome happiness monkey does not king. last. When one of his older monkey friends dies, the Monkey King is very upset. He decides to leave his island on a raft of his own making, in search of an immortal who will teach him knowledge and how to defeat death. He comes ashore and wanders, the humans see him and run away, unsure of his ape-like humanoid appearance. He takes some clothes that were left out to dry and continues on foot. With his face hidden by a hood, he travels through the villages and sees many examples of human degeneracy and vice. Man literally goes to the first human village. He looks at that sh Just look at his face. Just look at this man's face. He looks at that sh 
and he's like, OnlyFans? Deep pics? Twitter? Nah, I'm out. I'm out. He continues and goes into a forest. The mo oh, I forgot Instagram. Monkey King hears a woodcutter singing an interesting song. And when he questions the woodcutter He's about the origin, he okay. learns that it was taught to him by an immortal residing in the forest. The Monkey King arrives at the entrance of a temple in oh, which familiar. a Taoist magical martial artist named Puti Zushi resides, <laughs> who initially refuses to let him in. The Monkey King waits outside the entrance for many months, refusing to leave. Puti Zushi is impressed with his persistence and lets the Monkey King in. Puti Zushi accepts the Monkey King as a student, teaches him all advanced Taoist practices, including the path of immortality. You see, this is why I love sushi. Like, this dude's goat. This goes to show that where there's a will, there's a way. And tells Sun Wukong that it was his destiny to meet him. Puti Zushi then advises Sun Wukong to never unnecessarily brag about his abilities, this as doing so may encourage what? others to ask him to teach them. He advises that if you teach them, they can cause trouble. And if you don't teach them, they will resent you for it. He then forbids the Monkey King from revealing who taught him, and the loyal Sun Wukong vows never to reveal who was his master. With that, Sun Wukong wakes up in the forest. Listen, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. On every single occasion, I see this guy with his little head, this roach looking thing. I honestly don't fuck with it. I'm not gonna lie. I just don't fuck with it. Like, it just makes him look so bad. Like, this, they gotta remake this, you know what I mean? Like, they gotta make him look cool. Forrest, realizing that all the years of teaching had taken place in some form of compressed time trance. Later, whenever Sun Wukong is asked about his powers and abilities, he gives an honest answer by saying that he learned everything in his dreams. When he returns, he learns that a demon named the Demon King of Confusion is kidnapping the monkeys in the mountain of flowers and fruits to use as slaves. Oh, no. He kills the demon and its minions and saves the kidnapped Damn. monkeys. He also brings all the weapon storage from a nearby country for his minions, but can't find a suitable weapon for him. Learning that the Dragon Kings possess many treasures, and in search of a weapon, he travels to the oceans and oh finds God. a Dragon King's palace. At the entrance, what? Sun Wukong asks for an introduction, but Dragon King Ao Guangle tells his guards to turn him away. Sun Wukong barges in anyway, ignoring the guards' protests, insisting that the Dragon King must be confused to reject a fellow king. Inside, he introduces himself and encourages the Dragon King to give him a weapon. Quickly realizing that Sun Wukong is quite formidable, the Dragon King feigns readiness and hospitality. He's the literal, like, quote of fuck around and find out. Fatality, ordering his subordinates to pull out weapon after weapon. Sun Wukong tests each weapon, but none are robust enough for the Monkey King, <laughs> who is not happy with the situation. Sun Wukong Gosh. then acquires the gold banded Damn. staff Rui Jingu Bang, the stabilizer of the four seas, and a treasure from Ao Guang the Dragon King of the Eastern Seas. The Monkey King is the only creature strong enough to wield the staff-like weapon, and there is an instant affinity between them. The golden banded staff can change its size, lengthen, fly, and attack opponents at its master's will. It weighs 7,960 kilograms. When he is not wielding the weapon, the Monkey King reduces it to the size of a sewing needle and puts it in his ear. In addition to taking the magic staff, the Monkey King encourages the Dragon King to gift him with outfits fit for a king. The Dragon King calls on the other main Dragon Kings to help him get this for Sun Wukong, and they arrive and give Sun Wukong a golden chain mail, phoenix feather cap, and cloud walking boots. The Phoenix Feather Cap was one of the treasures of the Dragon Kings, a red gold hoop adorned with Phoenix feathers. Traditionally, it is depicted as a metal hoop with two striped feathers attached to the front, presumably the characteristic plumage of the Feng Huang, or Chinese Phoenix. Sun Wukong thanks the Dragon Kings and leaves happily. The Dragon Kings, who had acceded to his requests out of fear of his great power, denounced him to the Jade Emperor. Upon his return to the mountain, He's a snitch! He's a bitch ass snitch. What? That Dragon King motherfucker is a bitch. He demonstrates the new weapon to his monkey tribe and draws the attention of other beastly powers oh, cool. who seek to ally with him. He forms a fraternity with the Bull Demon King, the Saurian Demon King, the One-Horned Demon King, the Rock Demon King, the Lion Spirit King, the Macaque Spirit King, and the Snub-Nosed King. Now sentenced to death for blackmailing the Dragon Kings, defies Hell's attempt to retrieve his soul. He erases his name from the Book of Life and Death, a collection of books that claim to have all the names of all living mortals, 
and the ability to manipulate life, the Dragon Kings and the Kings of Hell report it once more to the Jade Emperor. The Heavenly Army uses everything, even trying to wipe him out of existence completely, but ultimately fails. Hoping that a promotion and did this man, did, did this man just cheat death? Did he just cuck death? Not only that, they couldn't erase him from existence. Like, this man's got Gojo level of fucking aura. Holy shit. And rank among the gods will make him more manageable. The Jade Emperor invites the Monkey King to heaven. The Monkey King believes that he is receiving an honorable place as one of the gods, as he is told that he will be appointed Horse Protector a fancy term the heavens coined for a stable boy, the lowest job from the sky. When he discovers the importance of status in heaven and how he has been bestowed the lowest position, the monkey king frees the cloud horses from the stable, then returns to his own realm and proclaims himself the great sage, equal to heaven. The heavens reluctantly acknowledge his self-proclaimed title after Gold Star advises the Jade Emperor not to rush into military action against the reckless, rude, and insolent monkey, warning that failure to defeat Mono would damage heaven's reputation. Gold Star advises the Jade Emperor to superficially indulge Sun Wukong's vanity while treating him like a pet and inviting him back to heaven to prevent him from causing trouble on Earth. The Jade Emperor agrees after Goldstar laughs that the fanciful title is actually a meaningless joke, revealing Sun Wukong's overconfidence and ignorance of the important workings of heaven. Sun Wukong suspects a trap, but is pleased when Goldstar, acting as an envoy, addresses him as Great Sage equal to heaven and presents him with official documents. Goldstar tells Sun Wukong that he has been given a much higher position as Guardian of the Peach Heavenly Garden, which peach-loving Sun Wukong accepts. Later, when Queen Mother Shi Wan boy eating ass. But that actually that might be the wrong kind of that might be the wrong kind of peach. I think uh I, I think I uh I think I might have been confused. Wang Mu sends seven heavenly maidens to pick peaches for the royal banquet. Sun Wukong discovers that all the important gods oh. and goddesses have been invited to the banquet except for him. When he tells the maidens that he is great sage equal to heaven, the maidens laugh and reply that everyone in heaven knows that he is simply an immortal who tends the peach orchard. The Monkey King's outrage then turns into an open challenge. During the preparations for the royal banquet, Sun Wukong sneaks in to sample fine food and drink royal wine. In a drunken state, the Monkey King wanders the sky while all the gods and goddesses head to the banquet. He reaches high levels of the palace that are left unguarded by the authorities of heaven, as only deities of the highest and purest spiritual power can access them. Realizing that he is at the top of the 33 layers of the <laughs> heavenly palace, Sun Wukong steals and consumes Lao Zi's immortality pills oh, no. and Shi Wang Mu's immortality peaches, takes the rest of the Jade Emperor's royal wine, and then escapes back to his kingdom in preparation for his rebellion. The Jade Emperor refuses to accept Gold Star's advice to find another peaceful way to deal with Sun Wukong and orders his forces to mobilize. <laughs> Laughing continually and being utterly amused, and with a combination of martial prowess, cunning, and clever creative responses to many different types of powerful celestial weapons used against him, the Monkey King single-handedly defeats the 100,000 celestial warriors of the army. He's the GOAT. Bro, he's the GOAT. Like, he's the GOAT. This man can literally, like, every single strand of his hair or some bullshit like that, right, can be a duplicate of him. It's like endless Shadow Clone Jutsu from fucking Naruto. This guy is the GOAT. Like, dude, on every single anime, like, webtoon, whatever, right? Comic, whatever you want to call it, that he's been in. This man is just, he's, he's f***ing him. Like, he is him. He's the definition of, this is my world, and you're just living in it. ...me of heaven, the 28 constellations, Neja, and the four heavenly kings. Then Guan Yin, the Bodhisattva of Mercy, and his disciple Muja Moksha arrive. Guan Yin sends Muja to survey the situation and fight Sun Wukong. Muja is defeated. Then Guan Yin suggests to the Jade Emperor's nephew Erlang Shen to fight Wukong. Wukong and Erlang are evenly matched, and eventually both become terrifying figures, scaring off Wukong's monkey army. Sun Wukong is despondent and turns into a fish to run away. Then they both keep shape-shifting to become things more powerful than the other. Finally, Lao Zi throws his diamond jade ring at Wukong from behind while he is fighting, knocking him senseless and allowing him to detie Erlong. After several failed execution attempts, Sun Wukong is imprisoned in Lao Zi's eight-way trigram crucible for 49 days to be distilled into an elixir by Samadhi Fires.
They try to liquefy my boy? They try to drink him? That's crazy. Yo, that is wild. Imagine getting liquefied so that they can drink it. That is extremely fucked up. Holy shit. This will allow Lyozi to retrieve the longevity pills from him. The crucible fire is hot enough to burn beings of Ayo. such indescribable power that they rival the Buddha himself. However, when the cauldron is opened 49 days later, the Monkey King jumps out, having survived by hiding in a corner marked by the wind trigram, where there was less fire. In fact, the heat from the Samadhi fires has strengthened his bodily structure, making him stronger than ever and impervious to further damage. The heat <laughs> Man's like, what doesn't kill me makes me f***ing stronger. It also gives him a new ability. The Monkey King can now recognize evil with his new Huoyan Jinjing, lit, golden gaze. Sun Wukong then proceeds to destroy the Crucible and proceeds to Heaven's main chamber to confront the Jade Emperor and his senior advisors. The Jade Emperor and the authorities of Heaven appeal to the Buddha, who arrives in person from his temple in the West. After hearing Sun Wukong argue that he should be the new Jade Emperor, the Buddha makes a bet that the Monkey King cannot escape from his palm. The Monkey King smugly accepts the bet. He jumps and flies to the end of the world. Seeing nothing but five pillars, the Monkey King believes that he has reached the far reaches of the universe. To prove his trail, he marks a pillar with a phrase declaring himself the great sage equal to heaven and urinates on a pillar. <laughs> he then jumps back and returns to Buddha's palm to claim victory for him by winning the bet. Then, Sun Wukong is very surprised to find that the five pillars he found are simply the fingers of the Buddha's hand and finds it impossible to believe. When the Monkey King tries to escape from the palm, Buddha twists his hand and knocks over a rock, sending Sun Wukong back to Earth. The rocks form a mountain on top of Sun Wukong before the Monkey King can... Imagine being such a f threat that the only way that you can be stopped is by the literal God of creation. That is crazy. Like, that, that just goes to show how f strong Wukong is. That is wild. And lift it. The Buddha seals it there using a paper talisman. The Monkey King remains imprisoned in a stock for 500 years to learn patience and humility, with only his head and hands protruding from the base of the mountain. The Buddha arranges two earth spirits to feed the Monkey King iron pellets. When Bro, Buddha looked like he about to cook this monkey. <laughs> Buddha out here looking like a French boy. Look at his hands. Monkey out here like, well, this is it, boy. I'm getting cooked now. Goddamn. When he is hungry That's funny. and molten copper when he is thirsty. 500 years later, Guanyin Bodhisattva seeks disciples to protect a pilgrim on a journey to the West to retrieve Buddhist sutras. The Tang monks went west to study the scriptures, went through the Wuxing Mountains, removed the spells, and then rescued the Monkey King and captured him as an apprentice. Tang Sanzang, a monk of the Tang Dynasty, promised his freedom after the pilgrimage was completed. Sun Wukong will be difficult to control. Guan Yin gives Tang Sanzang a gift from the Buddha, a magical ring that, once the Monkey King is tricked into putting it on, can never be taken off. When Tang Sanzang chants a certain sutra, the band tenses up, causing an excruciating headache. The Monkey King faithfully assists Tang Sanzang on his journey to India. Tang Sanzang's safety is constantly threatened by demons and other supernatural beings, as well as bandits, as they believe that by eating Tang Sanzang's flesh, one will gain immortality and great power. On the way to obtain the scriptures, Sun Wukong descended to eliminate monsters and repeatedly accomplished extraordinary feats. The four masters and apprentices arrived at the Lei Yin Temple in Xitian and obtained the Sanzang Buddhist scriptures. Sun Wukong achieved righteousness and was named the Buddha of victory and struggle.